All right, well, hey, welcome back uh, to everyone. And so welcome to session six, how to pray uh, in a crisis. So uh, well, one of the things that you know I've been talking about is to, for you to, to record a little couple, you know, less than a couple minutes of what God's doing in your life and share it with us. So this might be a great opportunity um, for you to do that. We've been sending out um, links in an email to do that. And then just to kind of, we're hoping in the next couple of weeks to be able to do it on Sunday morning in the lobby. So if you're one of the folks who come in person, you might be able to shoot it in the lobby, just kind of sharing what God's doing. But it's a way of encouraging everyone. And I think it's uh, kind of, it's neat, neat to see what God's doing. So, all right. Yeah. And I failed yes. to, to introduce everyone. So the Pastor Brian Children's uh, Alicia helps in our next steps area. You know, Pastor Eric leads worship, and I am your host uh, once again. All right, <laughs> so um, so let's go ahead and let's go through um, the questions just real quick, and I'll, I'll read them. But one of the things that I thought and I jotted down in my notes um, that Rick had mentioned uh, about how to pray in crisis is he said, you know, there's uh, I think he said there's you're one of three people. You're, you're either going in a crisis, you're coming out of cri a crisis, or you're going to be going into a crisis. <laughs> right. and I think that that's... Uh, that's encouraging. That's probably, yeah, it's encouraging. Well, but I think it's true. Oh, yeah. It is true. Yeah. It is true. That's a cycle of, of life. Um, so hopefully you had a chance to watch the video. And so, um, so uh, the six uh, lessons that we learn is uh, one was turn, uh, turn to God for help. The next one was, uh, remember how, God, uh, how big God is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the next one is, remember what God has done, speaking in the past. Uh, next one is, remember, God ha uh, remember what God has promised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, appeal to, next one, appeal to God's character, <clears throat> admit my inadequacies. Uh, the next one is, rely on God's resources. Mm -hmm. uh, I turned to you. Uh, the next one is, um, relax in faith. Mm -hmm. And then thank God in advance. Uh, and then the last one is to experience, uh, to expect God to turn battles into blessings. Mm -hmm. Right. So I thought, again, I thought this was a very strong um, outline, uh, really good stuff. So I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. So we are on page 150. All right. So let's see what we have here. And so I'll read the question. Has there ever been a time when you stopped to praise or thank God uh, first in a moment of crisis? And then it asks you, if so, how did, the, how did it work out? So what, what did we come up with? Is there anyone want to share? Who wants to go first? I'll go. All right. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, my wife, Yvette, and I were just talking about this, uh, this particular thing the other day. We were just kind of remembering some stuff uh, that went on. And... Um, I don't know if my sister-in-law is going to be watching, but hopefully not, <laughs> not like totally throwing her under the bus here. But uh, several years back, uh, my family, we've got two boys. And so it's my wife and I, we've got two boys. And, uh, but we only had one vehicle. And so with dropping the kids off at school and they were having to go at different times, all kind of stuff. So anyway, with, without making too long of a story, we decided and kind of felt like we needed a, a, another vehicle, another car. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of praying about that and seeking that out. Didn't want to get something, you know, too expensive. And uh, found this great little Chrysler that we, that we bought and uh, that we had for a short time. And uh, anyway, my, uh, my sister-in-law ended up borrowing it from us um, to drive my, my mother and father-in-law around up where she lives and ended up crashing the car. Mm -hmm. And so we had this car, it was like, it was like a blessing for our family. And then my, my wife's sister ended up crashing it. <laughs> and, um, but first of all, we, uh, we, you know, we were like, did anybody get hurt? Right. And praise the Lord, nobody was injured in the crash. Uh, my sister-in-law was fine. My, my in-laws were fine. The people in the other car were not injured. And so nobody was injured or harmed. So that was like, you know, obviously the biggest thing because right. you can replace stuff, but sure. you can't replace yeah. people. And so mm -hmm. we were thankful to the Lord that everybody was safe. And then, um, you know, maybe it was just God's grace in our lives, but my wife and I, we didn't, we didn't freak out. We didn't get like, you know, go crazy over it or anything. We just were like, all right, well, you know, and so we kind of went through this process of taking it one step at a time. So we, we had this car and then, uh, the car ended up getting totaled. And so now we don't have one. Yeah. So we're like, Lord, you know, if it's your will, maybe you'll provide, you know, something else. And long story short, you know, we were able to get another vehicle and it was not a huge hassle and all that kind of stuff. It all ended up just kind of working out. But 
but what it, but what we were talking about, uh, my wife and I were talking about the other day, was that it just kind of saved us. The whole stress, the whole anxiety, the whole frustration, maybe even getting angry, like, you know, we let you borrow this and then it got broken and all that kind of stuff. It was just like, we kind of just let all that slide. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, it ended up kind of being a blessing in the relationships and also just in our own home life and everything. It was one less thing that we just chose. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get stressed out over right. this. Right. You know, and God, he provided uh, in the first place and he ended up coming through and, and <laughs> providing again and it, and it ended up working out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we could have, we could have gotten a little crazy over oh, that yeah. and, yeah. uh, we did not. And so thank the Lord for that. So have you yeah, lived your good. car out? No. <laughs> <laughs> no hard feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We trust no you. No love lost. <laughs> yeah. All right. Someone else want to go? Leash, you want to go? We'll work, work oh, I'm sure that's fine. and then we'll come back. Um, you. you just kind of reminded me about a car story. <laughs> for myself and I remember I walked outside to take my daughter to school and my car wasn't there. Do you oh, remember no. the story? Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, okay. And so I walked <laughs> back in the house and I was like, hey mom, like, can I borrow your car? Yeah. My car's gone. And she was like, um, sure. Where's your car? I was like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, but, um, but in that moment I did not, I wasn't like, oh my goodness, where it was yeah. like a total moment that yeah. I, that it just, it, and I literally was like, God's going to have yeah. my back here. And I, my mom wanted me, she literally, I do remember this story. Mm-hmm. She literally was like, we got to go look for your car. And like, she was <laughs> taking me to the craziest spots. I'm like, so here we are judging all these people. Right? <laughs> We're judging everyone. I was like, it's not feeling good. I'm like, if it's going to come, it's going to come. Let's go home. This is not yeah. like we went to Costco and I'm like <laughs> looking in every car, but it's like, give it to God. Cause he's going to, you know, at the end of the day, well, not the end of that day, <laughs> but a couple of days later, I got the phone call and I was able to go and get my car or whatever. But in that moment, just having that peace and giving it to God, thank you for reminding yeah. me that because mm-hmm. sometimes you forget the things that God doesn't enter through your life. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I literally gave that to God and I was like, I am not going to stress over it. What is it going to bring my car back? Yeah. It's not going to bring yeah, my car exactly. back. Yeah. I'm like, I got to worry about right now. I'm going to get this baby to school. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since we're talking about car accidents, yeah, it's a trend. <laughs> that reminds me of a time I totaled my car. Mm-hmm. So I had gotten this little Toyota Celica. It's like this little sporty fast car. And um, I was coming off the highway and they were doing construction. And so cars were backed up. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have enough time to stop. So oh, no. it wasn't entirely my fault. <laughs> no. uh, okay. Yeah. But I ended up plowing into the person in front of me. Uh-huh. And I completely told my car. I had my daughter in the car at the time, oh, my goodness. and the airbags deployed, and yeah, and I kind of got like a mild concussion. Oh, kind of. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just remember, like at the time, I stumbled out of the car. I told my daughter at the time. I said, "Get out of the car. Get out of the car," because I didn't know if the car oh, was right. going to blow up or something. You know. And thankfully, like you said, nobody was hurt, uh, severely hurt, and the person in front of me wasn't hurt at okay. all. Um, insurance covered, covered and everything. And I was able to get a car after that. Uh, my brother actually was going to Germany, so he, he kind of gave me his car uh, at a really cheap price, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I remember stumbling out of the car and I just was in a daze and I couldn't believe what was happening, I wasn't sure. But I just remember, uh, I called my dad, told him that the car is total, I totaled the car. And I remember him saying, how do you know it's total? <laughs> I said, Dad, it's total. <laughs> Don't argue with me right now. Yeah. I'm all banged up. The police is here. And, um, but I just remember praying at the time. And I, I was really praying for Brooklyn, too, because mm-hmm. I had kind of put her through this traumatic experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, God kind of gave me peace. And God mm-hmm. took care of the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Everything worked out. So, yeah. 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 That peace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, well, for me, I don't have a car story. Oh, man. Uh, Come on. So, um, but but what um, for me that it's not just I didn't think of anything specific mm-hmm. um, for me personally. But um, what ends up happening for me when I start stressing on stuff is my mind goes, mm-hmm. and yeah. it just takes me off into the wild blue yonder, mm-hmm. and um, you know I start you know making assumptions and you know you do all this other stuff you work yourself into a frenzy Mm -hmm. and so you know through my knowing my personality I just learned to when I start getting stressed and I sense my mind doing that Mm -hmm. to really step aside and kind of re-anchor myself back you know in prayer and in worship um, to do that and so uh, you know because there's certainly been and we all probably could admit times where we started off 
you know, and then two hours later, we're just obsessing about mm. whatever crazy stuff that we have no control over yeah. <clears throat> or we can't change or whatever. And uh, so for me, that, that was one of the things of, of just really learning to pause uh, multiple times a day when my mind starts going off into, mm-hmm. into that. So uh, it was good, good stuff. Sorry about the, all the car crashes. Well, so yeah. don't let, uh, don't let Brian borrow your car yeah. and uh, what, you know, don't let her look. Park you. <laughs> don't let me park you. Don't let the crazy just, just Where's the my car? <laughs> You were the one at Costco. <laughs> So the second question is, um, Jehoshaphat prayed, uh, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And so is there a situation that is overwhelming or intimidating you? And what steps can you take to shift your focus from your problems uh, to the problem solver? So we'll start on the end. Brian, you mind starting this time? Yeah, um, I love that he used Jehoshaphat. It's such a great story. And the way he processes, this is one of the good kings, mm-hmm. which is rare, right? Uh, yeah. And we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Like, he's in total desperation. Like, he's caught off guard, and he calls on God, and God is the problem solver. Um, I actually think of, in the Bible, Hannah as well, when she was really desperate and wanted a mm-hmm. child. And she comes and she prays before the Lord, and the, the priest thinks she's drunk yeah. because she's so desperate in her mm-hmm. prayers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... Um, so yeah, um, so yeah. I mean, it's sad to say. I mean, like we as guys, we don't want to talk about how you know we we're we're gotta be tough all the time, you know. And real men don't cry. And uh, but calling on God in total mm-hmm. desperation, mm-hmm. trusting in Him, and being willing to admit that you know we're we're helpless, God. Yeah. You know, that we're weak. Yeah. You're strong, and um, please help me. And mm-hmm. I love that He talked about praying in a crisis is different. Mm-hmm. Because like sometimes God has to get us there. Doesn't mm-hmm. C.S. Lewis say something about uh, God screams in our pain, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. He whispers other times, but he, he yeah. screams in our pain. And uh, so God has to kind of, I guess, that cycle you were talking about mm-hmm. is something he has to do in our lives to yeah. keep us humble. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise we'll forget to humble ourselves. So he uses these yeah. to keep us on our knees before mm-hmm. God. It's mm-hmm. good. How about you, Alicia? Man, that was good. That was good. Thank you for that. Um, Basically, I just was saying that there are things in my life that are crazy right now and they're really difficult, like being a parent and uh, being out of school, career, going Mm -hmm. in and out, losing so many relationships in 2020, Mm -hmm. like um, multiple relationships, close, close relationships. Um, And just coming through those, coming through those, was really, really tough, Mm -hmm. you know, but uh, shifting that to the Lord and focusing on all that dwells within me through Mm -hmm. him has been just really beneficial. And even just this whole entire prayer book, that's really it. I just, you just have to shift your mind. Mm -hmm. You have to just call on the Lord. It's really a humbling experience. And like you say, it's, um, you know, even for men, it's the same for women. And I hate to be like, well, women too, you know, but like I'm, (laughs) I'm a rock for many people, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, I'm a rock for many people and like it is hard for me to cry out and the desperation that I've been putting into my prayers through this time has been just insane. Something that I've never experienced before, right. something I've never done before, actual tears, you know, and it's just, it's been mm-hmm. good. It's been good. So yeah, yeah cry out. That's yeah. really good. That's yeah. good. How about you, Eric? Uh, for me, I just, you know, I was kind of thinking through this question. I don't really feel like there's anything that's like overwhelming or intimidating me right now. Mm-hmm. But I, but again, I love this idea, the truth of shifting my focus from the problem to the problem solver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, Rick was so great, especially in this, uh, in this video, he's got just some really powerful one-liners that make you stop yeah. and think. So mm-hmm. shifting my focus from, from the problem to the problem solver. And then I was just thinking, you know, isn't it, isn't it our human nature yeah. when the problem arises to focus on the problem? Right. And then in our mind, you know, as you were saying, Pastor, just it starts to spin out of control. But God wants our focus and our faith to uh, remember Him as the problem solver. Right. And you know, Rick Warren even said, "The bigger the bigger your God is, the sm- smaller yeah. your problem yeah. appears." Mm-hmm. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And so um, uh, it's I, I just jotted down on my book. It's almost like the problems in life are an opportunity for God to, um, and I can't even read my writing. Yeah, neither can I. (laughs) 
But the problems in life are like an opportunity for God to say, remember how big I am? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Let, let me show you, mm-hmm. let me show you one more time. Yes. Right? right? So it's not like he's saying, right. oh, you already forgot. He's mm-hmm. saying, you got to remember how big I am. But here, let me show you again. Let right. me tell you, I had to yeah. interrupt you, but I literally wrote in my, in my book that God is not some average size male. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I yeah. have, when I think about God, I think like I, for some reason I have this picture of this average size male. And I'm like, he's so much bigger than that. Like, what can this average size male do that God can do, right? No offense. Yeah. No, no yeah. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> God's bigger than you, you, yeah. you, you. You know, um, I like what he says here where he says, admit your inadequacies. Mm-hmm. I know we're hesitant to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, in my own life, and just to be totally honest, like the most powerful prayers that I think I've ever prayed and works usually every single time is God, I can't. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Jesus said, apart from him, you can do nothing. Mm-hmm. And if I just said that to God, which I say quite often, yeah. can't do this. Mm-hmm. I can't do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And God answers, like right. comes through every single time. Mm-hmm. He's right. You're right. You can't do it. Yep. Because I can't. Moses, Thank you for admitting Moses that. Moses said that. God mm-hmm. can't do it. I'm not yep. the right guy. Mm-hmm. You know? And just admit your inadequacy. That's totally okay. Mm-hmm. Totally okay. Well, for, for me, um, I didn't have anything specific either, except for, and I've, I've shared before, is, you know, the difference of what the church is going to look like coming out of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, of course, you guys know, we've been working on a digital strategy and an in-person strategy and all, all that that looks like. And so for me, it's, it's, um, it's ground that I've never been on, uh, mm-hmm. not the in-person stuff, but the digital stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and um, just not knowing, you know, what, what does that next step look like and how, how do we do that? And so um, that's been probably one of the biggest areas that I've been, you know, seeking out wisdom and to have, a, you know, I don't know if it's overwhelming or it is intimidating, but I don't know that it's overwhelming. Right. Um, but just, you know, seeking God. And then um, the one the one thing and, you know, back to Henry Blackaby's experiencing God, you know, not not to just pray. But to listen and watch, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. listen and watch and yeah. see what God's going to be doing. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, those are those are. It's it's uh, it's good to, to to pray, but it's also good to watch and see sure. God's yeah. activities. So, mm-hmm. all right. Uh, the next one is <clears throat> Pastor Rick said, when you get uh, when you let God fight your battle, it is a witness to everyone around you. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you communicating to people around you? by the way that you handle crisis in your life, what does it uh, say about your faith? So, uh, you wanna yeah. go first? Yeah, uh, it's convicting, right? Yeah. I, I wrote down in my book the first word, yikes. Because <laughs> it's like, oh wow, thank you Lord for bringing that up right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because if I'm honest, I'm not always great at letting God handle my battles. Right. Or, you know, the, the battles in my life, the problems, the issues, it, it is human nature to just grab hold of that yeah. and start start doing it yourself, and it doesn't work as well, mm-hmm. right? Unless you're letting God take control and lead the way He wants to. And so, certainly, there's a desire in my life. I want to uh, do that and let right. God handle that. Um, but as I would assume, all of us, I'm, I'm a work in progress. Yeah. So sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. Mm-hmm. But it's a powerful reminder. <clears throat> I, I wrote down it's a powerful reminder that God doesn't just want me to see how big he is in my life, but he wants to show others right. as well. So he wants to use us as, you know, just a demonstration of his faithfulness and his goodness. And so that others can see how big he is uh, through our lives as well. So it's not just like for me to see, mm-hmm. but for other people. And so, yeah, um, yeah so this was, this was a good one to, to close with and just have a little, <laughs> little zinger at the end, <laughs> right? Yeah, no kidding. All right, Alicia, how about you? Um, I'm on your same boat. I like to turn to God often. Um, Sometimes it's quick. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, I have my own ideas. Mm -hmm. But um, all in all, I do like to point my struggles and everything that I go through towards the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, because there are a lot of people around me who don't believe Mm -hmm. in the Lord like I do. Mm -hmm. And so I like to be very verbal about what God does in and through my life. And um, and if anything, they get to watch me struggle and come back every mm-hmm. time, you know, and yeah. so, and give him the glory. And so, and I'm okay with that. I'm mm-hmm. okay with the authenticity behind that. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. But um, I do remember to give God the glory. I pray with my family. I pray with my friends. I pray with my daughter. You know, I like to, if, you know, anybody has problems, I'll pray right then. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not going to, I'll go home and pray for you. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to be an example of God's love and to always keep that in the conversation. Um, 
and then I also reach out for prayer if I need it. So, I mean, it's yeah. just, it's, it's all over the place, but I do like to demonstrate that um, in its entirety. So even when I'm weak, even when I'm struggling, I like it to be all the way authentic. And so I'm not perfect, you know, but, right. but I trust God. Yeah, Great. It's good. It's mm -hmm. good. So um, for me, uh, letting God fight my battles, that's so awesome um, because uh, in Hebrews, when it talks about the faith hall of fame, all the people, mm -hmm. that God said, by faith, Abraham, by faith, all these people go down, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom it says, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be a person that God's not ashamed to be called my God. Yeah. Wow, he's not ashamed of me. He fights my battles for me. Mm -hmm. And then when he does, you notice that Jehoshaphat gives a praise. Like, he boasts in the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Paul said, he boasts in the Lord. Now. We've got to be careful we don't boast in ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. But because of that, then we don't boast at all. But mm -hmm. God wants us to boast in the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Give Him the credit. Mm -hmm. And the more we give Him the credit, the more I would think He would want to do in our lives, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's great. Right. <laughs> the, the, one, the one thing that I jotted down is I, I think, too, uh, for, for me anyway, I think more often than not, if... If we have a battle, we instantly think it's against a person, mm -hmm. and you know. And I think that in where Scripture says that our battle is not against, you know, people, but against principalities, powers, and darknesses. Yeah. And I think so much of it is 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 a spiritual battle that takes place. And uh, even if you read, you know, through and you 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 see how God's victory was in Jehoshaphat, it wasn't this the, the traditional you know, mm -hmm. wartime plan, right? I mean, right. they had, mm -hmm. you know, bands and music yeah. and singers and stuff. So it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. But I, I think for, for me, you know, I think Eric, you said, my first reaction is to want to fight, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, if you take three steps back, then it's like, yeah, you know, is this really a spiritual battle, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's taking place uh, yeah. in my life or in the world or whatever, and, and kind of allowing that to do, uh, allowing God to work and the, the interesting thing is, is, as we probably all know, he never fights the way that we would think or mm -hmm. we would want him to. Right. right. It's always different, and he does it in a, in a unique way. So um, it's, it's kind of cool to watch uh, how all that stuff takes place. So, uh, yeah, it's good, it's good stuff. So take a step back. Let God fight your battle. Don't fight it yourself. So what, what I'm going to do now is we're going to go to page uh, 151. And... Um, well, we're just going to close in prayer, and I'm going to pray for us and, and the other pastors that rotated in, and then I'll pray for the folks uh, who are who are tuning in and watching, and then um, you know just to kind of a quick plug um, before I pray, just you know want to thank you guys who watched, who tuned in um, through this for you know just going along with us on this journey of the 40 days of prayer. I pray that you'll continue to be consistent. Um, you know, there's a, lots of great resources in this book. It's not just a one and done thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's some, some really good stuff in there to, for uh, helping. But the other thing, this is our first time that we've done this. Mm -hmm. And so it would be great to hear kind of what you guys thought. If it's something that you would like us to do more of in the future, um, you know, where we have a time of chatting and, and video, and it would be great to, <clears throat> to hear what, what, it, uh, what they have to say. So email us or call us or, you know, if you come in person, let us know. If you're online, put it in the chat. And so, so let's uh, all close in prayer, and then uh, we'll wrap this thing up. All right. So, Father, thank you for uh, just this opportunity um, to gather and to just encourage, to hear the stories of how you work uh, uniquely in each of our lives. And I, I hold up our staff to you, and I just pray, God, that uh, you will continue to give them wisdom and discernment, and guidance as we, as we journey on and move forward of making, uh, making disciples and, and changing the, the culture in which we live in. And I'm grateful for uh, for Brian and for for Brandon, Eric, and Eric, um, Lord, and just pray special blessings. And thank you for Alicia and her willingness to come along and and uh, be a part of our group as well. It's, uh, it was great and a blessing to have her and hear her words of encouragement as well. And uh, Father, we just pause and we hold up to the the folks who are watching, um, who are tuning in, and Lord, many of them need breakthroughs in their life. Um, they have relational issues and financial issues and perhaps uh, habits that are that are destroying and destructive. And God, I just pray that you will give them that boldness and that you will empower them to break the chains that are holding them down. And uh, Father, that, uh, that you will uh, give them the guidance, direction, just all that's necessary for that. And we pause and we thank you in advance mm -hmm. uh, for what you're going to do and the freedom 
uh, and the victory that you are going to give to the folks who are tuning in. Thank you for this time of the 40 days and just the, I pray God that the fruit of this series will continue to manifest itself even in the weeks and months ahead. And uh, Lord, thank you for, uh, for Pastor Rick's team of putting this together. A lot of work yes. goes involved and I just pray a special blessing in his life and in his staff's life uh, as well as, as they move forward in, in new um, campaigns for churches to follow along. Again, thank you for your love and grace. Thank you that we have an opportunity to, to speak to you and, and Lord, that we get an opportunity to journey with our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so hey guys, thank you so much for, um, for hanging out with us for the last uh, few weeks. And wanted to, again, if you can, let us know what God's doing in your life, one. And then two, let us know uh, if you enjoyed the, uh, the round table or the whatever we are, straight line, curve line, whatever we are, <laughs> mm -hmm. the discussion group, all right? So until then, God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>